and asking people who use our courts, litigants, witnesses, jurors, lawyers, social workers, and others, how the courts can provide better services. You may have heard of that television program, Undercover Boss. Well, last month I visited two county courthouses as the undercover judge. <laughs> Dressed in a t-shirt and capris, I had the opportunity to talk with all types of visitors to our courts. It had been almost 20 years since I spent a full day in a trial court. And talking with so many people brought back memories of my practice in Northeast Missouri. As I sat shoulder to shoulder with people in the hallways, I could feel their anxiety, their worry, and their apprehension as they waited their turn to appear in front of the judge. For most part, it was the first time for many in a courtroom, and they did not know what to expect. And many did not have lawyers to help them navigate this unfamiliar turf. The reasons that bring people to our courts are as varied as the people themselves. And all too often, a trip to the courthouse is the result of an unhappy event or an unmanageable problem. A conversation that I had with a nice elderly couple drove this point home for me. They were there to do something they imagined they never would ever have to do. Distraught and not knowing where else to go, they were there to have their adult son declared incapacitated. And although as sad as some of these cases were, I was also reminded that courts are problem-solving agents and do bring happiness to some. In fact, when I told one lady that I knew the courthouse was not always a place of happiness, she remarked, I like this place. It's where I got my divorce last week. <laughs> it's not only important that we listen to people, but we also need to be careful about not using too much legalese.